China's new findings on the moon 2022. The Chinese have just made a substantial new discovery on the moon's surface, courtesy of their Shangdi 5 sample return mission. Chinese scientists have confirmed the finding of a new mineral, a transparent crystal called Shangdi site, in the lunar regolith. China is only the third country, after the United States and Russia, to find a new rock type on the moon. Shangdi site is currently the sixth distinct mineral detected on the moon that has yet to be discovered on Earth. This is a big deal, not just because we have a brand new space rock, but also because this is one of the discoveries that China made in their new collection of moon soil that they bought in 2020. Following the Chang'e 5 robotic lander's successful return mission, the Chinese discovered helium-3 in the same regolith that contained the Chang'e site. The Chinese assert that not only do they now know the concentration of helium-3 in moon dust, but they are also the first to have figured out the extraction method necessary to recover this isotope from the return samples. This isotope of the element, helium, is being considered a potential fuel source for nuclear fusion reactors. On the one hand, the fact that new things are being discovered on the moon is fantastic. Well done. For science. On the other hand, the fact that the finding was made by the Chinese rather than NASA or at least another space organization that is a little more open is not ideal. This is all that has been officially announced. We are forced to question what else they might be keeping a secret. So let's discuss what might be happening in the situation. Therefore, this particular Changi site, discovery originated from a little amount of lunar regolith, or 61 ounces of the moon's surface, rock and dust, which was collected by the Changi 5 rover and returned to Earth in 2020. The rover landed on the moon's region called Oceanus Procellurum, which is simply referred to as the Ocean of Storms. On the moon, we can spot a long dark blotch in the northwest corner of the visible side. This particular sample was taken near Mons Rumker, a historical lee volcanic area where the rock and soil are thought to be only one. Two billion years old. Shami 5 used a mechanical scoop and a drill capable of digging two meters beneath the ground. NASA's own sample return mission in the 1970s discovered regolith that was substantially older, ranging from 3, 1 to 4, 4 billion years old. The Shami 5 sample collection was conducted far from any Apollo crew landing sites. China discovered one particle of a colorless, transparent crystal that resembled a diamond in that sample. It is only 10 microns across at the change site. It is a small speck of substance that has been identified as a columnar crystal and phosphate mineral. The discovery is one of six new minerals found in lunar samples and has been recognized as such by the International Mineralogical Association. Now don't get it twisted, the moon crystal is incredibly cool, but helium-3 is the most significant discovery that China has made in its sample, the moon to date. We have long known about this, therefore it is not something new. We are fairly certain that it is in great abundance on the moon while it does exist on earth in very small proportions it is caused by the effect of solar wind and cosmic radiation impacting on the bare lunar surface the moon lacks a magnetic shield to deflect radiation like the earth does helium-3 is unique because it possesses two protons and one neutron it is the only known stable isotope of any element with more protons than neutrons. Theoretically, a deuterium and helium-3 nuclear fusion reaction would produce 164.3 megawatt hours of energy per gram of helium-3. The Hoovered Amp produces 11,000 kilowatt hours of electricity each day, 
which can be difficult to visualize on a larger scale. Therefore, based on rudimentary mud skills, 67 grams of helium-3 would be needed to equal a massive hydroelectric dam's daily output, which is obviously absurd. Additionally, since neither the helium-3 or the byproducts of its reaction are radioactive, they wouldn't render the reactor's components into radioactive nuclear waste that we would then have to deal with. The best way to discover helium-3 on Earth is as a byproduct of tritium isotopes, decaying in our current stockpiles of nuclear weapons. As a result of the current collection method, where we only receive roughly 15 kilos or 33 pounds of helium-3 annually, helium-3 is highly expensive. It costs around 17,500 US dollars for just one gram and is currently utilized in medical imaging technology, small-scale nuclear fusion, and neutron radiation detectors that check U.S. border crossings for nuclear materials. The moon's surface may contain 1.5 million metric tons of helium-3, the resource of R, equivalent to roughly 1.5 quadrillion dollars. China has a big advantage in estimating the amount of helium-3 that will be required to produce nuclear fusion power on a global scale, because we only need about 100 tons of it. They also have the Cheney 5 mission, which is searching for helium-3 deposits on the far side of the moon, and they assert that they already have a mechanism for obtaining the essential isotopes from the lunar soil. Of course, Getting enough helium-3 to make a major difference on Earth will still be difficult. Helium-3 levels in lunar soil are thought to be roughly 50 pots per billion at their peak. China claims to have calculated the real concentration based on the results of their sample analysis. But surprise, surprise, they won't divulge those figures. Therefore, according to our estimation, 150 tons of regolith would need to be processed in order to obtain just one gram of helium-3. That is a lot of mining in space, and returning it to Earth is a challenge as well. The Long March 9 rocket, a super heavy lift vehicle that would compete with the SpaceX Starship in terms of mass to orbit and interplanetary travel, is currently undergoing Extensive engine testing in China. China announced that the fourth phase of its lunar exploration program would include the establishment of a constellation of satellites orbiting the moon to serve as a communication and navigation aid for future lunar missions earlier this year. According to current plans, the Long March 9 will be able to carry up to 150 metric tons of payload to low Earth orbit, 50 tons to the Moon, and 44 tons to Mars. By 2028 or 2029, the rocket is anticipated to make its first flight, and it is anticipated that Chinese crewed lunar missions will use it in the 2030s. Therefore, it's not as though China wouldn't be able to set up a mining operation on the Moon, and they already have a plan in place to get there. The China National Space Administration declared full state approval for the following three phases for lunar missions following the Chang, E site and Helium-3 announcements. These are Chang E6, E7, and E8. It's anticipated that they'll start launching as early as 2024. Chang E6 will be the first mission to Ever return back samples from the far side of the moon, Chang'e 6 will further study that side of the moon. Chang'e 7 will travel to the south pole of the moon to look for water rice for future human colonies. Robotic technologies will be sent to the lunar surface by Chang'e 8, starting construction of a foundation for their international lunar research facility a planned moon station that is slated to 
be built alongside the Russian space program. All of this is anticipated to occur over the following 10 years. According to the director of China's Lunar Exploration Program, the purpose of our mission is to lay the foundation for the building of a lunar station. So there are a lot of technologies to be tackled, and we need to explore the energy of the moon. Great challenges lay ahead of us. However, with our previous experience and an excellent team, I believe that we will succeed. On the other hand, NASA has its own mission to establish a human presence on the moon with the Artemis program. In 2024, 2025, or even 2026, Artemis is planned to return humans to the moon's surface. Don't know for sure, maybe before 2028 at least, but right now, things aren't going so well. Maybe the SLS rocket will get back on track and everything will be great, but maybe it won't, and if it doesn't, then China will essentially have free reign on the moon for the foreseeable future unless someone else steps in. SpaceX is said to be sending a spaceship rocket to the moon. In any case, it is intended to be a reusable human lander for the Artemis mission. Therefore, there is really no reason to believe that the Starship can't just handle the full task on its own if NASA can't make its SLS and Orion system work. We believe Elon is keeping quiet about this issue mainly because he doesn't want to offend anyone at NASA. So it is obvious that we have no idea how this will play out. It's quite simple to have ambitious goals like space exploration, moon mining, nuclear fusion, and other exciting activities but it will be absurdly challenging to actually do all of these things. So, is there anything to be worried about? Perhaps just the fact that China's out there making new discoveries about the moon while NASA is still at home. Playing with the same rocks that they collected 50 years ago is not a good look for the Western world. We kind of built our empire on exceptionalism. And if we start getting overshadowed by competing nations, the knives may start to come out anyway. What do you think will happen? Leave a comment down below. Will China take control of the moon and dominate energy? Or will they simply share with the rest of us and all will be fine? If you love this video, give us a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.